Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Laila. I'm co-founder of Fitnessity, a company that aims at improving wellness outcomes through personalization. So Fitnessity belongs to the relatively new market category that we call personalized wellness, and that is also the subject of today's talk. We're, we're based out of New York, and we started this work out of MIT and Stanford, and basically what we do is we offer wellness coaching that uses insights from your physiology, history, and lifestyle to personalize and optimize your wellness. So uh, today's talk is gonna be about personalized wellness. And starting with a quick background, as you may know, about 80% of some of the most common and costly health conditions could be prevented through lifestyle changes. Now, what most people don't know is that about every year, about $100 billion is spent on physical fitness and weight loss just to make these changes happen. And that's just in the US. However, most studies show that at least 60% of that amount is wasted. So for example, if you get a gym, gym membership right now, there's a 60% chance you will not use it at all. So when you have someone in front of you who is at high risk of chronic disease and what you recommend is that they move more and get a gym membership, well, it's likely that that is not gonna have any impact on their lives. Another example is if you start a new diet right now, there's a 60 to 90% chance it won't work. And we could go on and on about the examples of all the uh, heavily marketed diets and trends that are sold every day and that do not necessarily lead to any measurable results. And the truth is, a lot of these inefficiencies could be avoided or could be prevented if we take a closer look at the individual. So, so let's take an example here. So, so we have here two individuals. They, they look pretty similar, right? Um, so they're both male. 50, they live in San Francisco. They have a BMI of 27, which technically classifies them as overweight, and they both have high cholesterol. So at this point, what you might recommend to both of them is, well, um, move more, uh, eat less sugar, eat less fat. Now, why don't we add one more data point, a pretty random one, actually. So their rest and metabolic rate, or the number of calories that their body burns at rest every day. So it turns out it's 1,900 for both of them, so it's still the same, nothing new. Which, by the way, also means that one data point is not enough, so why don't we add another one? So their resting heart rate. Um, so the first one has a resting heart rate of 65, which might indicate that he's actually pretty active. So he's, he's, he's pretty active. His high BMI is probably, probably, um, is probably uh, wrongly classifying him as overweight to to a heavier or larger muscle mass. The second one has a resting heart rate of 85, which according to research places him at twice the risk of premature death than the first profile. And so here, what you see here is that the first profile, he's, he's already active, he's already engaged, and his high cholesterol is probably linked to factors other than his level of physical fitness. And most importantly, he will react differently, he will behave differently, and his body will react differently than the second profile if we were to give them the same recommendations. Now let's add another, one last data point. So genetically, he also appears to be less likely to gain weight on a high saturated fat diet, as opposed to the second one who appears to be uh, more likely to gain weight on a high saturated fat diet. So once again here, the same diet will actually have a different impact on their bodies. And this is just a very small subset, an honestly random subset of, uh, set of data points that we could look at to learn more about the uh, physiology, history, and lifestyles of these two individuals. And so the point here is that there really is no such thing as one-size-fits-all solutions in wellness. And the promise of personalized wellness is to your life. So that brings me to the second part of this talk, which is more around the market trends and opportunities that are emerging within this space. So personalized wellness is a small but growing market category. And 
to get a better sense of what we're talking about, uh, let's take a quick look at the wellness market as a whole. So we're talking about a $270 billion market, uh, and that's just in the US. About a quarter of it uh, goes to, or 60 billion goes to weight loss. Ni about 90 billion goes to nutrition, and a total of $45 billion goes to physical fitness. And that includes $25 billion for gym membership. And personalization today, as you can see, is a very small fraction of this landscape. But that also means that the uh, opportunities are substantial. And personalization, personalization is mostly present in four subcategories today. Um, the most obvious, perhaps the most obvious one is fitness and mind body, and that includes activity trackers, obviously, smart scales, but also devices to track things like emotions, um, stress level, and uh, metabolism. And it's, it's a pretty, it's, it's not, there's a lot of excitement about wearables, but it's not just about wearables. It also includes um, in home uh, or at home set sensors. It also includes uh, larger devices and machines, for example, body composition analyzers, body scanners, and in addition to obviously software and applications. So the most common ones would be the ones that are activity specific and that track, for example, your running or cycling performance, in addition to smart clothing. Now the second big subcategory where we see a little bit of personalization or tech-enabled personalization is uh, healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss with applications that track or tools that track your food, your calories, but even what's inside your food, for example, to test for allergies. Um, another big subcategory is preventative or pers and personalized medicine, and that includes uh, testing, so obviously genetic testing, microbiome uh, screening. Uh, in addition to a variety of uh, at-home tests that are sold directly to the consumer. And the last small subcategory is workplace wellness, where we see a little bit of, of, um, of all these tools and applications slowly enter the workplace. And so the, key, the common denominator here and the key takeaway is that uh, most products and services do not cover more than one subcategory. And in other words, uh, personalized wellness is a pretty uh, fragmented subcategory. Now, last section, last section of this talk is more about the trends. Um, so <clears throat> there's a general consensus that tracking data, uh, and tracking data itself is not enough, so the user gets bored and data itself needs to be put into perspective. Now, with that in mind, I'd here with what I call the three stages of personalized wellness. And we are, I believe, somewhere between the first and the second one. So the first one is data collection. So the very first devices were obviously not very accurate, uh, or tools were not very accurate, they were expensive. Today it's a little bit more about accuracy and prices obviously are going down. But there's also a lot of work that still uh, needs to be done in data collection itself. So for example, in areas like tracking emotions, or even simple things like tracking calorie uh, intake in a way that it's not self-reported. So for example, by scanning the food or by looking at your blood sugar. And there are always new ways of, of tracking data. So um, for example, at Fitnessity, we, so we use a wide variety of devices, uh, tests and assessments. But one new way in which we started to collect data is 3D body scanning which actually gives you a 3D body image of, of the individual uh, and enables you to track how the body is changing with exercise and diet by showing you, for example, the heat map of where the individual has lost weight or gained weight. So uh, the point here is that there really is uh, new ways or different ways to track uh, data, for example, here in a way that you can't really see from a scale or from simple body composition analysis. A second stage uh, is more around recommendations. So many of the devices and tools uh, had a, uh, at least at the beginning, had a use case that was not very clear. So you get a number as a consumer, and you don't really know what to do with it. So uh, the second generation of, of, of devices are more around recommendations. So we see, for example, um, devices or tools that sort of act like a personal coach to you. Um, especially in areas, for example, we see that in areas like running, which is a pretty uh, injury-prone uh, activity. So having a, a device, for example, that can tell you when, when you need to correct your form or when you need to stop before you get injured can be helpful. 
And recommendations are not just uh, tech enabled. So for example, at Fitnessity, we use a network of um, human coaches actually that help you navigate the data. Uh, because we think it's just way too much information, way too much knowledge to have as a consumer. And also, human connection is not something that you can get from a device or a test, obviously. So there are really different ways in which just the recommendations can be achieved. Now, on the last, on the final note, so the third stage of personalized wellness is what I call here personalization or personalized wellness as a lifestyle. Because most of the use cases that we're talking about, and for example, most of the clients that we see at Fitnessity are here because they have already a specific uh, problem to solve. So they need to lose weight, or um, they, they have a specific condition and need to adjust their lifestyle uh, based on that condition, or make changes in their lifestyles to manage their condition. And so this stage is where uh, lifestyle changes, so the, the, the data collection and the recommendations are actually integrated in your lifestyle before you actually need it, so before you're sick or about to be sick. And for that, the technology needs to be integrated in a very uh, seamless manner and non-intrusive manner. And it also needs to offer a comprehensive view of your wellness, so not just one perspective of it. And so this is the, the stage or the era where um, lifestyle changes are made in a proactive way rather than reactive, whether it's to reach optimal performance or to avoid disease before it actually happens. Thank you. I know it's lunch, so it's probably a dumb question, but I'll still ask. Oh. Let's keep her on stage to double check. Does anybody have a question? And Mia has a question. Mia? I'm curious as to how you guys go to market. Are you a B2C model or a, a, a B2B? How, what's the go to market route? Yeah, so with regards to Fitnessity, uh, we have the two models actually. So we have a B2C model, so for direct to consumers, and we also have B2B one where it's actually through the employer. So both of them. Okay, thank you, Mia. Uh, no more questions. People are hungry. Well, I am. Uh, let's go to lunch and try and be back for 2 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.